What's up guys, it's me Jeremy, and after much debate, I've decided that I'm going to bring back this series, which is of course, Breaking the Meta. Today's episode is about Annie support. Let's start with the pros and cons of support Annie, starting with the pros. First is that Annie has a very solid support kit. Her crowd control is pretty much just like Sona's Crescendo, but faster so it's harder to dodge, and often people don't really expect it. Her underrated crowd control ability is what makes her a very viable support champion. Also, she can actually do quite a bit of damage with the right runes and masteries. Having a support that can 1v1 people and make plays by themselves, and simply just create another threat on your team, can make kiting very easy, since you can kind of just stay away from your AD carry and flash away when they jump on you, and get them to focus you down instead. Having that extra threat makes your teamfights incredibly strong. She also has an amazing laning phase. Any CC makes her pressure and lane equal to that of a Tarek, but your damage is more than any other support. She actually has a ton of very solid matchups, and can perform very well, with pretty much all 80 carries. Lastly, her wave clear is very strong. You can actually get some farm during the mid game when supports lack things to do other than ward and wait for your team to make a play, so this can accelerate your build by quite a bit, and allow you to get some AP. Just make sure that you aren't taking farm directly from your team though. Now onto the cons. First, Annie is extremely squishy. You can get caught out and die very easily because of this, and solid positioning is a must. You need to position very similar to an AD carry, otherwise it will be very easy for you to get focused and kiting will be impossible. In addition, she has no sustain. This can make laning hard, but it isn't really that big of a deal as long as you play it properly. Remember, Annie is a burst champion, so you need to either fight all in or just harass constantly without getting poked back to where the opponent's sustain is negligible. Lastly, she is extremely vulnerable to ganks due to her lack of mobility, so you have to have good map awareness and watch out for them. And that's kind of it for the cons I came up with for Annie's support. Mana isn't really an issue on her because of the build that I'll go over later, so as long as you position properly, you're pretty much an overpowered support champion. So now let's go over some tips and tricks on how to play as Annie's support. Her laning phase is fairly strong, and you can get in free harass really easily whenever you have your stun up. Don't be afraid to waste spells or use them on creeps in order to charge your stun, as the zoning and fight pressure you can create with it is immense, as long as you can afford to waste the mana. However, it's very important that you avoid getting poked down, otherwise it will be extremely easy for you to get caught out and die, and this may require playing passive while your stun is down. In addition, be wary of ganks, as you're extremely vulnerable to them, so make sure you buy wards constantly, and have solid map awareness. Since it can be hard to start fights due to the visibility of your stun, one technique you can use is that when you have two charges on your stun up, use your disintegrate, which is your Q, on your opponent, and then while it's in the air, immediately use your incinerate, your W, and your molten shield, which is your E. This will cause your disintegrate to stun your opponent, despite the fact that you did not have your stun up when casting that disintegrate. This is an amazing way to catch your opponents off guard, but only use it when your team can follow you up because it does waste all of your cooldowns. For the teamfight phase, you want to make sure that you always have your stun up before starting a fight. Don't be afraid to initiate or flash in as long as your stun is up. Just make sure that you walk away and begin kiting immediately after you initiate, or you can die instantly. Otherwise, starting fights can work out really well, as lots of players do not expect initiates from the Annie support, especially if you're flashing in. It's very important that you do not hesitate when an opportunity like this arises to start a fight, because people get caught out by surprise when you stun them immediately, but if you hesitate, the opportunity will likely pass or your opponents will become expectant of that initiation. Other than that, just do your standard support job of trying to kite for your carries during the team fights. Now for the skills. You want to max your incinerate first, your disintegrate second, and of course put points into your ultimate whenever possible. This maximizes your burst while also giving you some amazing wave clear that you can use to farm creeps. For summoners, you want to take flash and exhaust. Ignite can be used instead of exhaust, but I find that the extra crowd control ability is absolutely necessary for kiting tanks and teamfights while you charge up the second use of your stun. For masteries, I take a 9021 setup with magic penetration in offense. 21 in utility is of course standard on range supports now, but this magic penetration has amazing synergy with the rest of my build. For runes, I take Magic Resistance Blues, Armor Yellows, Gold Pretend Quints, and Magic Penetration Reds. And everything else is really just standard support runes. You can take 5 mana regen yellows if you want, but they aren't really that necessary, and you do sacrifice crucial armor. For the item build, I start with a Fairy Charm that allows you to avoid all of your mana issues, 2 green wards, 1 pink ward, and 2 potions. 
I build Kage's Lucky Pick and then Philosopher's Stone. After that, I'll build my Sight Stone and level 1 boots. Now here is where this build gets interesting. You should be trying to get a little bit of farm around 30 CS or so in the mid game, as well as selling your GP10s to support the following build, which is a Haunting Guys, Sorcerer's Shoes, and a Void Staff. The order isn't really that important, just buy them in whichever order you can, but this build, in coordination with the runes and masteries listed earlier, is simply just so cost efficient and so powerful. With this setup, you can easily 1v1 the enemy AD carry if they aren't super fed and you manage to hit all of your abilities. It's really just awesome. You become almost another AP carry for your team once this build is complete. However, you have to be sure to keep buying wards as well as oracles when necessary throughout your build. And yeah, it kinda will take you forever, likely around 30 to 40 minutes to complete this build depending on how fed you are, but that's how it works when you're playing support, so you just gotta deal with it. Overall, any support is an awesome pick. She's an extremely versatile champion that can become very strong with the right build. Just make sure that you continue to buy enough wards for your team. She has quite a few strengths, but is actually lacking in the weakness department, and we'll likely see her played quite a bit very soon. She's a very fun pick, and is definitely competitive. My name is Jeremy, and that is it for this episode of Breaking the Meta. I'd love if you could support me with a like, or join me on my North American chat room Gaming Curios, which I am always in when I go online. Please subscribe for more awesome content in the future if you enjoyed this video, and I'd love it if you could follow me on Facebook or Twitter, of which I will have links in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.